My name's Craig. Uh, it's been on my heart for quite a while to give my personal testimony about how God changed my life. A couple of years ago, I lost everything, and uh, that was after God had uh, spoken to me in visions and in dreams about changing my lifestyle, changing what I've been doing. I, I, I've, I've dealt with drugs, I've taken drugs. Uh, the only thing I haven't taken in, the, in drugs is Nyope and uh, heroin, but everything else from cocaine, ecstasy, alcohol, dacha, I've, um, I've smoked uh, rocks. It was nothing for me to finish off a bottle of whiskey, at five liters of wine and a six pack of beer on a on a Saturday and then Sunday morning when the Shabin opened I'd be at the Shabin. And it's just amazing how God takes a person, picks you up out of the gutters, shakes you around a bit and changes your life. If you dedicate your life and if you really want to give your life to God. And the most amazing thing is no matter what trials and tribulations you go through, once you've given your life to God and you've really humbled yourself, laid yourself down at the foot of the cross and said, take me as I am. The thing that God does for you. Um, after I lost everything five years ago, not once have I slept in the streets. I've always had a roof over my head. I've always had a plate of food. When I was still smoking, people used to come to me and say, Craig, get some money for airtime, get some money for cigarettes. And it's Depends on if, uh, you, in your heart, you've got to really give your heart to God. I've run escort agencies, I've been a, a male escort, I've, I was a drug runner, I've dealt in drugs, uh, I've been involved in heterosexual relationships, hom homosexual relationships, threesomes, orgies, I don't, you know, a lot of people, uh, think yeah, God doesn't pick up the people from the gutter. So once you've been, once you're in the gutter and you really look for God and you really cry out to Him and you really want to change your life, that's when God's willing to change your life. But it's better for a person to change your life before you hit rock bottom. Because a lot of people, once they hit rock bottom and uh, God changes their life and starts picking them up, they revert back to their old, old lifestyle and that's what God what God wants from you. Once you've changed your life and you've dedicated your life to God, you must be able to sit and communicate with God without using words. You've got to be able to communicate with Him through the Scriptures, uh, different ways. And God communicates with you in different ways. A lot of people also turn around and say, yeah, what has God really done for you? Uh, that's in this last week. I've been supplied with my ticket to Thailand and China to go and do missionary work. Uh, I've always had a roof over my head. I've always had a plate of food. There's so many, there's so many things. Uh, the mere fact that a couple of years ago, four years ago to be exact, the doctors gave me 10 days to live. Uh, I was rushing to hospital Sunday morning uh, with... Uh, the doctors uh, coming to me the Monday morning saying, listen, I hope all your stuff's in order, you've got 10 days to live. Eight days later, I walked out of the hospital, much to the doctor's amazement in that. And it just shows you, God that God is there if we, if we really want to change our lives. It doesn't matter what you've done when you, when you were a kid, uh, whether you've been involved with theft, whether you've been locked up in jail. God... God takes you if you if you cry out to him and you really want to change your life. God is there and I don't know, I I just wish more and more people will realise that it's amazing having God having God in your life. It's it's better than uh going on a trip uh after taking drugs and it's better it's the best eye that I've ever had. A lot of people want to know how come a, a person lands up in positions like when, uh, taking drugs, going over to alcohol and that. There's many, many reasons. My personal reasons was 
I lost my wife and my two kids many uh, years ago. I've tried to commit suicide a couple of times. And that, a lot of this stuff comes from um, self-hatred, which comes from rejection, uh, mental abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, Freemasonry, different different religions, uh, going in places where you not, you shouldn't go, playing glassy glassy, Ouija board. <sighs> There's so many things that the you know a person hears, don't don't do this, don't do that, and as youngsters you just say, ah, you know, bugger that. What do the old people know in that? But it's not that. It's what. The Lord says, and I'm so grateful that through um, the the internet and through friends, I managed to get hold of uh, Stand Up for Jesus, and through them, I had deliverance. It took it took quite a while. Um, it was it was a heavy section a session, and I'm I'm grateful uh, for what Stand Up for Jesus has done for me in my life. I don't think. Uh, if it was for them, I wouldn't have been where I am at the moment. It was my spiritual life, uh, not just uh, physically, but spiritually where I can sit down, or I can be walking and I can be having a conversation with the Lord and know that it's the Lord that's uh, talking back to, back to me, not some imagine, imaginary friend or uh, other people or uh, false religions or you know Im- imagination you act- you can actually hear the voice of God and when God changed my life I was act- I'm actually quite lucky because he's opened so many spiritual doors for me uh, I get I get confirmation in, uh, with with questions through visions through dreams uh through the word, uh, the Bible, and even if I ask uh, for a, a question or something where I need an answer or guidance, I can hear the voice saying, you know, either do this or either do that, or don't say a word, turn around, walk away, or pick up the Bible and go and read these scriptures. And I, I'm I'm so grateful for Stand Up For Jesus because I had a problem with uh, forgiveness, forgiving people for broken relationships, for rejection, um, for self-hatred, causing me to try and commit suicide. And at one stage, my father had a lot to do with it. Um, But I've forgiven him, and I can sit here now openly and talk about these things. And I've spoken to many people on -on one-on-one occasions, and a a few times I've spoken to small groups of people about where I've, where I've been, where I've come from, and where I want to be. And it's just amazing how God just takes you, and He, if you let Him, He just leads you. But what a lot of people also don't understand is, if if you go and just let anyone lay hands on you, or come and pr- uh, pray, pray for you, and uh, anoint you, and all that, and you haven't heard the voice of God saying, let this person anoint you, or go to that person for anointment, then that's a worse thing to do, because we we as people that don't know what's going on in the spiritual realm, don't understand how other people can uh, transfer things into our lives, like fallen angels, uh, soul ties, uh, different types of demons, and you know, we just take it for granted. Uh, you know, we've been, you know, once we've did it, uh, given our lives to God and confessed our sins, but it's not just confessing your sins, you've got to go and you've got to confess specific sins, specific things that you've done in your life. It's easy to say, God forgive me for my sins, but what I see as sins, and what you that uh, might be watching this uh, video at the moment think of sins, it could be two different things. You might think um, looking at looking at someone else's wife and lusting after that person might not be a sin, but to, to me it is. 
And if we, if we go and we just listen to what the Word of God says and we just read what the Word of God says, we, then, then our, the, the, the Holy Spirit that's in us, even though we are, haven't given our lives to God, the Holy Spirit still leads us and is crying out to us, take my hand, turn, turn your life round. We never know when the Lord is going to come back and say, listen, it's time. And it's no, when, when, when it's time, we're not going to be able to turn around and say, oh yes, but my mom didn't uh, lead me to you, or my mom, or my father, or my aunt, or my uncle, or my sister, or brother, or, or the priest, or the pastor, or the reverend, or the domini didn't. In the, in the Bible it stipulates, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. We, as, in the, as human beings, are going to go and stand in front of Father God and we're going to be by ourselves. We're not going to be able to call witnesses or accuse other people. And, you know, I've, I'm one of the few people that can really say, I've been to the pits. I've been, I've been rock bottom. And I'm not a millionaire at the moment, but my, my, my riches aren't here on earth. My riches are still, are still stored in heaven. And as I'm sitting here at this very moment, I'm blessed. I'm going away uh, with uh, some friends before I go to China. Uh, I'm going, uh, I've been blessed to go away with them on holiday. That's just, that's just another way our God works. And after uh, I was, I had deliverance with, uh, through Stand Up For Jesus, I went uh, and I got involved with a, a certain church group that's uh, very into laying hands onto people and when they pray for you they've got to touch you and it's really always hugging you and it's just different different things and I went up for uh, prayer for healing uh, one Sunday people People laid hands on on me, and I was nearly back to square one. And uh, it's by the grace of God that I managed to get hold of uh, Stand Up for Jesus again. And I was lucky to get get deliverance again. And it's just amazing how how God works and puts people people on your path. And people are put on on our paths to help us, to help us grow, to be there for us if we've got spiritual questions. And what I've learned in three weeks is this unbelie- unbelievable about what, what's going on in the spiritual spiritual realm, about spiritual warfare. A lot of people don't know what the armor of God is when you talk to them about it. Uh, ach, that's just a biblical ritual that people go through. If you, if we don't use the full armor of God, and if we don't use the blood of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, and things go wrong in our lives, it doesn't help. Oh God, where are you? Father God's always been there for us. It's, it's we as humans that turn our back, back on the Lord and say, oh yeah, God doesn't exist. Oh. God's turned his back on me. God's forgotten about me. But do we really want to change our lifestyle? I, 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 I smoked nearly for 38 years. And I mean, at one, one stage, I used to go through two packets of 30 a day. Then it went down to one packet of 30. Then it became two packets of 20. And then it was a, a packet of 20 a day. And just one morning when I got up and I lit a cigarette and I was halfway through, something just said to me, that's it, put it down. And I put it down and by the grace of God it's been eight months now that I haven't touched the cigarette. I don't I don't even crave one. I'll, daily I come across people that smoking or come into contact with people that smoking that. And I don't even I don't even crave a cigarette. And that's because I m- made the decision. I'm going to change my life. And I'm I want Father God to live in me and I want to be an example to people out there and 
it's only by the grace of God that I hope my life and I hope my light and I hope whoever's listening to this understands what it means to change your life. Not just say, uh, Lord, I'm, I'm going to give my life to you uh, today, but uh, you're going to do this, that, that, that. There's no conditions. You give your life to God unconditionally. And it's not, I'm going to give my life to God today because I need help and all that stuff. And the minute things start going right, you turn your back on that. It doesn't help. You either give, you either for God or you're against God. And if you're against God and things go wrong, it doesn't help saying, oh God, where are you? Or, you have a is here, you my, uh, forget. It doesn't work like that. We as uh, people have to really change our lives and repent, uh, about playing doctor, doctor, uh, sleeping with our sisters, uh, sleeping with our cousins, having, uh, sexual relationships before marriage, having sexual relationships with other people while we're married, and in having se- uh, sexual relationships with more than two uh, people or three people at the same time. Yes, it's fun and it's great while, you, while you're doing it, but when things go wrong in your life, a person forgets about those times, and I'm lucky because... Uh, Father God reminded me of where I've been, what I've, what I've, uh, what I've gone through, because to me, uh, the Lord is everything in my life, and the Lord laid it on my heart that I must, I must make a, a video testimony of where I've been, what I've, uh, what I've experienced in that, and you know, people. It's just amazing how God works in a person's life. How He brings people um, across your path that needs help. I'm, I'm, I've, I've taken drugs. Uh, I've dealt with drugs. I've run, uh, run drugs. I've, I was a male escort, uh, a stripper. So I think I'm actually quite lucky because I can empathize and I can sympathize. I can relate to people that in that situation that want to come out of it, but they can't come out of it because they don't know how. They don't know the Lord. It's just by the grace of God that I got I got pulled out of the gutters at the right time, and I've had spiritual people that have helped me grow. And one of the most amaz- amazing group of people is a lot of people that's on Stand Up For Jesus. The motivation that you get there from different people's testimonies, from the, uh, from the questions that get asked and the answers. And I would, I would personally recommend that the people that haven't given their lives to God and that they haven't really confessed uh, all their sins do so and turn their lives around times times of the essence we're going to run out of time and it's going to be too late when we turn around and say oh but no one helped us no one it's this one's fault or that one's fault uh, the Bible also stipulates we can't we can't claim ignorance it's just basic basic things and I, what I can say is I hope everyone is blessed and that my testimony does have an impact, even though it's a very small impact. I hope that it does have an impact on some people's lives because it's just awesome how God took me from, I wouldn't even say the gutters, I'd say he, he took me from the bottom of the septic tank. And... cleansed me, uh, healed my wounds. I can talk about things sitting here talking and not even wing or shed a tear anymore because I've really been forgiven and uh, through the grace of God and through His forgiveness I've learned to love unconditionally, to forgive unconditionally. And what I can say is 
God bless uh, everyone that's watching this and please think about it, about changing your life round and if if there's any questions the people uh, that's affiliated to stand up for uh, Christ are not ashamed so I would say feel free to ask because that's what I did and through asking I'm a changed person God bless what I forgot to talk about is the times that I tried to commit suicide when uh, I lost my wife and my two kids uh, in a car accident I really that was a very low point in my life that's one of the reasons why I I rebelled against society, I rebelled against uh, God and I, bl I blamed society and I, uh, I didn't blame God but I had a lot of questions, why, why me, why this, why that and the one time I, uh, one suicide attempt was I took a uh, city uh, Valium tablets and a bottle of whiskey. Popped the tablet, took a, took a, uh, swallow of whiskey and that, that's how I finished the tablets and the whiskey and by the grace of God, um, someone, uh, walked in that I was uh, sharing the place with and rushed me to hospital. That was the first time. Second time I tried to commit suicide, um, okay, you're not going to see the marks on my arms and that. But when I, when I was lying in hospital, uh, I, I clearly heard the Lord say to me, you can, you can try as many times as you want to, unless, you, unless you've done what uh, you, you're supposed to do. And I'm not, going to, I'm not going to allow you to come home. But the Bible also says, do not take your own life. It's a, it's a form of murder. And I didn't know it at that stage. I've uh, discovered it uh, at the latest stage in my life. Uh, another time that I tried to commit suicide, I took a gas bottle. I was living in a block of flats and I took my uh, gas bottle, took it into the room, took um, two sleeping tablets when I was ready to go to bed, opened the gas bottle and in the middle of the night my next door neighbor decided no, he needs a drill right now that he lent me over the weekend came, came to my front door knocked, knocked didn't get any reaction, smelled gas oh, oh, uh, oh, forced the door open came, rushed in took, uh, took the gas bottle out opened the windows, rushed me to hospital another time was I tried to overdose again and it, you know a person mustn't try and go down that road many people aren't as lucky as I am to have had people come round uh, I believe that it's the Lord that sent the people round either by angels or by speaking to the people directly I've never asked I've never gone uh, down that road again uh, contemplating suicide these were m many years ago and you know once we start studying the word of God getting to know what our, our purposes are a lot of people will say yeah my purpose is just to slog and slave there's no there's no thing as God doesn't want us to slog and slave he wants he wants us to be living out his word uh, we must be like living lighthouses there's so many people out there that's lost so many people that don't know uh, about uh, God and about Jesus Christ and about the Holy Spirit which I, you know I don't understand it's alright it's not taught in schools anymore many people believe in calling up their ancestors going to witch doctors going to St. Gomez, going to fortune tellers. I've been there. I used to, I used to do tarot cards. But that's, that's not what God gave me the gifts for. He didn't want me to give the gifts, uh, use the gifts that He's given me for telling fortunes and all that stuff. Uh, my gifts are 
meant to be used for spirit, uh, spiritual things, to help people uh, spiritually, not to, oh, go and play these numbers in the lotto and go and do this and go and do that. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm actually quite lucky because of the things that I can see, I can see into the spiritual realm, I can see what's going on right around me and at at this very pre- present moment, uh, I've just received a message saying, yeah, there's many many people that's going to be watching this that's going to think, oh, there's a klumbok troll die. It's a bunch of uh, hogwash. Well, you might think it's a bunch of hogwash, but I know, I know personally what I've gone through, and there's a lot of people who know me, and that know uh, about the times that where I've tried to commit suicide, where the doctors gave me 10 days to live, 8 days later I walked out of the hospital. Uh, I've never, I've never slept in the street, but, and it's only by God's grace. I've always had some, uh, a, a, a meal in my stomach, whether it be three times a day or once a day. It's just awesome how God works, and people please, no matter how bad things in your life go, don't think God's given up on you. That's, uh, that's when we must really turn around and say, Father, please help me. If, I, I myself get many, many attacks, even now. And the stronger you grow spiritually, the more attacks you get. And we must remember, the Lord Jesus was tempted for 40 days in the desert. Satan didn't just leave him. And why, why must we expect not to be tempted when Christ was the only perfect, sinless, decent human being that's ever walked on this earth. He, he laid down his life for you and me. And if he was tempted, why can't we be tempted? We will have sinned. We will... I mean, there's things that... If I've got to go into graphic detail what I've done in my life, half of you watching this will either uh, pass, pass out of uh, shock. The other half... Uh, He's going to treat this thing off and run away and want to get sick. So I've just given you a, a basic breakdown of where I've been, what I've done. Uh, I, I'm not proud of where I am, uh, what I've done in my life, but I'm very proud of where I am because I, I know it's only by the grace of God and by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that I can sit here giving this this test in me and people please don't wait till it's too late change your lives all this whole time a lot of people think that homosexuality and drug addiction can't be cured I've how can a person put it I've had Three, three types of uh, lifestyles, so homosexual, um, homosexual, heterosexual, and where you go whichever, if, if, if a person's in the mood to have the same sex partner tonight, you take it. Tomorrow night, if you want to have the same sex partner and a heterosexual partner, you take it. It's, it's, it's hogwash. A uh, person's not just born, born like that. It's demons um, that come into a person's life through self-rejection, uh, through rejection, uh, which causes depression, uh, unworthiness. You uh, start hating yourself. You start looking. You start doing things that you think that, oh, well, I'm going to spite my family, and I'm going to show my family, and I'm going to show society I'm different. I'm going to start. You know, I can take drugs. I know how to handle it. Fine person can handle it, but uh, eventually uh, you don't handle it, it starts handling you, and I, w- I was involved in a homosexual uh, relationship for numerous years, not just one or two years, uh, over ten years, and through deliverance and through getting to know God and getting to uh, study the Word of God, there's numerous places in the Bible where it says, Man shall not sleep with man like you sleep with a woman. 
a woman shall not sleep with a woman like you lie with a man. And I'm not just talking about homosexuality, I'm talking about just being gay, whether you're a, a, a morphy, like they call a gay man, or a lesbian. You know, people please. There is, there is a cure, there is a chance for us. If we start studying the Word of God and if we go and give our lives to God, there is, there, there is a thing that of finding love out there. We don't have to go and look for love uh, from another guy because our father rejected us or because of this or because of that or because you had disappointments in, in women. That's what I did. I thought I'm going to find. Fine. Uh, the first couple of years was fun. It was, it was nice. But eventually, I started thinking to myself, but is this what I want? I want, I want children. I want this. I want that. Fine. It's easy. It's easy to say, oh, well, same sex uh, couples can adopt or I'm going to find a lesbian, uh, that's going to be a surrogate mother f for me. It's not the same. Uh, we, we really need to, Get to know the Word of God and study the Word of God. It's not just in the Old Testament and it's not just in the New Testament where it talks about a same a man lying with man or female lying with female where it's an abomination to God's eyes. People, the, the Bible is full of places where it says, repent, turn away from your wicked ways, confess and, you, and we will be forgiven. It's not a joke. I know that if the Lord had to come down now, this very moment while I'm giving uh, my testimony, and he's got to say to me, Craig, why have you done this and why have you done that? And I, and I can say, but Father, I've repented. It was because of this and it was because of that. And I know that I have been forgiven. My sins have been washed away. But it's not just fine, my sins, I gave my life to God two, two days ago and now I can sin again. It doesn't mean we, uh, we can keep sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning. We've got to, we, we've got to make up our minds whether we want to live a righteous life or an uh, unrighteous life. It doesn't mean I can carry on with homosexuality and say, oh, I've got, I've got God in my life, but I can carry on uh, with drugs and I can carry on with uh, adulterous affairs and that. That's hogwash, people. And, you know, it's true what they say. Out of the, what comes out of the mouth is what's going on in the heart. And if a person curses and swears and uses foul language, it's because you're not, you're not happy within yourself. You're still, you, you're still in a, a pit and you're angry within yourself. Fine. I still, I still get upset when I'm busy driving and that. But the minute it happens, I can say, Father, I bring it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please forgive me. I plead the blood of Jesus. And I know that I'm forgiven. But it doesn't mean two minutes later I can, I can go and do the same thing. And all what I say is we've got to really get to know our Bible and get to grips with ourselves. If we put our past behind us, it's gone. It's buried. And to the, the gay people and the lesbian people that are watching this, there is hope for us. God does love us. And I'm blessed to have a, a new family around me. And they know about my past and I'm lucky. It, it doesn't get mentioned because Father God has forgiven us. And if uh, God forgives us, who is the next person to bring up our past? It doesn't exist. So, you know, really, uh, if you want to change your life, if you really want to change your life, you can do it. I've been free from homosexuality now for a couple of, a couple of years and I, all that I can say is I thank God and I thank the people for Santa up for Jesus because they've helped me a lot. Before I forget, uh, it, you know, change, a change of lifestyle and a new lifestyle is 
That's a sort of way. It starts off by wanting to change your lifestyle. Step two is repenting about our sins, about our past. And three is reforming our lifestyles, changing. And I've just, I've just been given a, a scripture from Father God. Uh, John 6 verse 35 I'm the bread of life whoever comes to me and eats from me will never go hungry whoever drinks from me will never go thirsty and I'm a living test and people believe it when I say to you five years ago when I lost everything and I mean everything my house, my car, my job every, everything like I said in Afrikaans die wille het behoorlijk afgekom die it is fan for strike. And God's been in control. I've never gone to uh, sleep in the streets. I've never gone without food. And it's amazing how God just works in our lives. If we change our lifestyle, if we want to really, really change our lifestyles, it starts with a thought, thinking, I want to change my lifestyle. This isn't where I want to be. Step two, repent. And it's, repentance isn't just, oh Father, forgive me. Repentance is going through each phase of your life. Repenting about cursing people. Repenting about delving, going down avenues where we shouldn't go down. Like I've mentioned earlier, playing glassy glassy, Ouija board, uh, being involved with Freemasonry. Uh, there's stuff that comes down in our bloodline curses. We don't even know about it. But if, 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 if a person studies the Bible, it stipulates, it gives us clear instructions. The sins of your forefathers will be passed down up to four generations. That means things that my grandparents have done, I'm being punished for. It's because the bloodlines haven't been cleaned. The soul ties haven't been cut. There's a lot of things that we need to do, people. You know, a lot of people will say, yeah, who do I go to? Where do I go? I go to church. But what, what do they know? You know, there's a difference about being a, a Christian and being a true Christ follower. Someone who, before they act things, what would Jesus do? And in the beginning it was difficult for me. Because I used to just turn around and if you looked at me funny, I'd let you have it. And it wasn't just in plain language. I rewrote a French dictionary about 20 times, both in English and in Afrikaans. And as by the grace of God that I was led to true True Christians, people whose life showed that they're Christians, their fruit, the fruit of the trees showed that they are Christians. Not false prophets or prophets that just go around uh, prophesying over people's lives and touching people and trying to convert you for their own gain. I'm, I'm talking about people who I met people I met uh, through Stand Up For Jesus who have b- helped, helped me have blessed me financially and that have helped me spiritually helped me with proper deliverance without laying a single hand and I've been lucky to go out and do spiritual warfare with a uh, people from uh, Stand Up uh, for Jesus. And, and I know that's also one of my callings, is to go out do, doing uh, evangelism and uh, spiritual warfare. And it's by the grace of God that it's not me, it's the Holy Spirit working in me. I'm just a mere vessel. You know, a lot of people say, yeah, you know, when I tell them, I'm just a bicycle, and I say to you, uh, Father God, you take me where you want to. Here at 
actually fit. It trap my and it was why in my world lay. And we must just decide, are, are we for Jesus and Father God or are we, do we want to live in the world? Do we want to follow what uh, everyone else is doing? And what, what I can say is people get, get hold of, uh, someone from stand up for Jesus or if you, if, if, if you don't want to use them, get hold of them and they can, uh, recommend other people. But please, beware of the false prophets out there. Beware of false doctrination. People going around saying, oh, you must take this painting away because it's evil. Oh, you must be taking that away and because don't have this cat, uh, statue and don't have this and don't have that and don't have this in your house that's hogwash the only thing that father god doesn't want in your house is a uh, false uh, false gods buddhas uh statues of kali uh buddha any is is uh islamic thing it's clear in the bible god is a jealous god it's the same as any 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 husband over his wife or any wife over her husband you don't want to share and Father God doesn't want to share us uh, with other with other uh, gods other idols uh, other false religions we are, he, he wants us totally to himself and people please you know uh, especially the youngsters and parents watching this please warn your kids about Charlie, Charlie going on at school. It's, it starts off small and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually the kids fall into the pit of uh, satanic uh, rituals and satanic worshipping and all that. And it's very, very difficult for people to come out of it. I know of people that are caught in the cult that can't get out of it. I know of people that's been involved in the cults that they've had mysterious deaths, that have just disappeared mysteriously. And it's not a joke. Um, if we don't humble ourselves before God, how can we expect God to come into our lives and to help us? We need to get rid of the gunk inside of us. It's the same as a glass of mucky, dirty, dirty water. Or take a cup of uh, black black coffee, pour it into a glass, and take a liter of clean water. The more you pour the liter of water into the glass of coffee, the lighter the coffee becomes. Eventually it becomes like a muddy water, and then it becomes slightly murkier and more murkier until it's nearly a pure color. And that's what uh, repentance is all about is allowing the Holy Spirit to come in into our lives and fill in us. And as, as the Holy Spirit fills us, the, the, you know, we get the demons go, we get rid of the demons and all that. But it doesn't mean we can keep running back to our old lifestyle. It doesn't work like that. Uh, you either dedicate your life to God completely and take the authority that God has given us Psalm 91 stipulates, I've given you the authority to trample on the lion, the scorpion, the cobra. And there's many places, Isaiah, there's, uh, where God says, I've given you authority. Luke says, uh, we've got the authority. There's many places where it says, I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me. And if we believe that We've got the Holy Spirit living in us. Father God lives in us and we live in uh, Father God. And if we've got God and if we live in godly lives, we've got the authority to reject and rebuke Satan and his enemies. It's not a life where you're going to not be attacked. You get attacks, headaches, migraines, uh, your eyes start playing up, your bones start playing up, your car packs up. And see, and that's when uh, you turn around and you say, hey, psh, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. But you, we can only do that once we've come to repentance. It doesn't help saying, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we, we haven't repented our sins. 
Because the veteran Satan turns around and he lies on his back and he says, Ah, who do you think you're fooling? He, uh, Satan is not our playmate. He's more powerful than what we think. And the only way we can be, uh, not, not beat him, the only way we can defeat him and refuse him in our lives is if we have the, the, the Holy Spirit living in us and if we live in the will of God. Not my will or your will, but if we live in God's will. People, I know I've said it a few times, it's time that we start changing our lives. And youngsters, please, don't delve where you mustn't delve. You know, things like masturbation, pornography, addiction. I can go on and I can go on. I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, oh, fine. I'm 54 years old, so, you know, now you people can uh, start thinking. Fine, you know, this guy, let, let, let's, you know, let's start uh, taking it seriously. Let's listen to this from the beginning again, or let's get hold of someone that can really help us. And what I can say is blessings, and it's, it's amazing what God does when you really totally surrender yourself, when you go and you lie, lie down and you say, Father, yeah, I am. You're a Yisak. Fat my Shusak is. Ek is nie volmaak nie, maar dier jy genade kan ek volmaak word. Father, yeah, I am. I totally surrender my life to you. Take me and use me and thank you for allowing me to be an instrument and it's amazing how Father God uses us, whether it be in our workplace, whether it be standing in the, in the supermarket and just turning around and saying to someone, yeah, have a blessed day. Thank you. Uh, if you see an old lady that's got maybe four items and you send them with a shopping trolley, fine, you've been in the queue before, but let the person go. It's just courtesy. It's having respect for one another. Not being selfish and self-centered. That's not what God wants. I, I hope um, I've made an impact or I've planted a tiny seed in, in uh, your lives. And I will be popping in from time to time on the website to see how things are going. And blessings to you all. And I'll be speaking to you guys soon from China. God bless. A lot of people wonder why things happen like physical abuse to children and that a lot of people turn around and blame, blame the Lord for it. But it, it's not the Lord that allows it to happen to us. It's the enemy that's using other people to try and break us down. Many of us have been called from an early age to fulfill God's purpose with us. I for one, uh, by the age of seven, I had a broken nose. By the age of 13, I had already had seven uh, broken ribs. The welfare wanted to take me away from my parents. But by the grace of God, um, the school that I, the primary school that I was involved with um, intervened. I was sent to a hostel. There, a lot of things uh, changed in my life. Things that made me start question God myself and today when I sit back and I look at it it wasn't um, God that had turned his back on, on me it was God that was carrying me through all these things making me a stronger person at the end of the day and that also results in a lot of rejection self-hatred, self-mutilation where you try and turn the inward pain in, uh, that you've got inside, uh, inside of you instead of get, asking God to give you the strength to get rid of the pain, to deliver you from whatever is um, possessing you. You turn it into a physical pain. You start cutting yourself. You start uh, rebelling against society, rebelling against everyone else. But once a person comes to the realization that the Lord's holding his hands out for you, all, what, all what you've got to do is reach out, grab his hands, Go down on your knees and ask for forgiveness, but ask for sincere forgiveness. And once you've repented and you've turned uh, your life around, you've turned away from 
the old you. You've cut off the bad branches and you start living according to God's will and you, whenever you get a bad thought or a bad memory comes up, you ask for, for forgiveness. You, you forgive that person and it does happen. You eventually start feeling lighter, start loving other people around you, start getting trust back in other people. And it's only through God's will that things like this happen. It's not because I want to do it or anything else. I want to change my life. I want to be a child of God. I want to be a beacon of light. I want to be a ray of inspiration to other people. I don't want to live in the past anymore. And you go down on your knees and you say, God, please, only by your grace, your unmerited favor, the blood of Jesus Christ, and you, and you mean what you want to do. You don't go today and say, oh, forgive me for this and that and that. And tomorrow morning when you wake up, you start cursing and swearing again. Or if you get stuck in a traffic jam. It's human to you get upset in that. But the minute you get upset and you ask for forgiveness and you put it under the blood of Christ and you try and change your ways, God does forgive and life becomes like I put it. I'm, I'm, most, of, most of my day I'm on cloud nine. There's times when I'm up and down, but the minute I start feeling down or something, I ask God for forgiveness. I repent, and one of the people that have helped me a lot is stand up for Jesus. There's so many things that we take for granted, that the Bible says, but we don't understand the forces at work um, in the spiritual, spiritual realm. It's not that because we don't see it, it doesn't happen. We don't see the, you, you can see the wind in the trees and that, but you can't physically see the color of the wind unless there's dust. And that's what the demons, the fallen angels, the evil forces, the dark world is all about. We can't see them, but they exist. And I'm a, my honest opinion, and I've said it to many people and I've said it many times, we're living on borrowed time. The sooner we give our lives to the Lord, the better our lives will become. It's only by God's grace that I'm able to sit here and put my testimony uh, on video. It's not because I want anything, any glory or anything. I'm just a mere vessel through which our Holy Spirit works. And I just want to thank God for the privilege of being able to put my testimony down. And I just hope that whoever watches this, wherever you are, whatever your circumstances are, that I can be an inspiration to you because if God can do what he's done for me, there's hope for all of us out there and I give God all the glory and honor and I'm just grateful that I know when, if God comes down now today, I can go and stand in front of the Lord Jesus Christ and I know that I am going home because whatever goes wrong in my life, and I repent about it. I am forgiven. I just hope that God blesses you all and that your lives will be fruitful. May God bless you.